Welcome to the Peerless YouTube. I am Katie North and today we are going to be painting a simple feather. So we've kind of gone through a couple seasons now and we've progressively gotten a little bit more challenging tutorials. So I thought it would be a good idea, especially for some of the new followers, hello, uh, to start with some of the basics. So this feather is so simple, but yet stunning. And so you're only using one color and we're doing the wet on wet technique. We are doing the dry on wet technique. And then we are also doing the lifting, which is one of my favorites and is also in, what is the, the snake plant tutorial. Um, so there's a, a variety of different things you can use this technique with. It's also good if you have like a little mistake or a little area is too dark you can do this as well. So I hope you enjoy and I can't wait to see your paintings and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so first we're going to open up our watercolor journal and loosely sketch a feather. Uh, I do a couple splits in it, very simple. We are going to make the feather um, wider than this after we do the base of the color. So make sure you give it a little bit of space at the top of the watercolor paper. Um, but they're going to be individual little, little feather pieces that come out. But this is like the main area that you know you're going to be doing um, the wet on wet and filling the whole thing with color. So now we are ready to start painting. You're going to flip open to the pearl gray section of your complete edition, and you're going to do the wet on wet and fill the entire feather with paint. So you want it to be a little bit more saturated in paint. So I do an area and have it pretty water and a little bit of the gray. And then while it's still wet, I'm going to be adding more to get it more saturated. So this painting is gonna look the best if you have a heavy amount of the pearl gray on your paper, because when you do the lifting, you'll get the contrast of the light and the dark. So to get the most contrast, you want quite a bit of paint on the paper. And then while it is still wet, we are going to be doing the little flyaway baby feathers on the bottom of the feather. And the way that you do that is you kind of just make swirls and loop-de-loops and no kind of general direction. But the main thing is that you want just a little bit of paint and a lot of water on the page. And so they get very soft and very fly away. And you will add a little bit of detail after too, but not too much. That part looks like one of my favorite, favorite areas. So we'll kind of check back in a minute. So right now, fill up your whole water, your whole thing with water, and then you can do a little bit of lines in the general direction that kind of like starting at the base and going up that kind of V shape. And depending on how wet your paper is, you will get a little bit of lines, but there'll be a softer blend. And then, which you can kind of see me doing a little bit too. And then the main thing too, is once you get this filled and you a couple little lines and then that swooshy, um, fluffy down feather at the bottom of the feather, is the next area you're going to be working on is going to be once it's completely dry too. So kind of play with it. You can follow along with me and I will check back as soon as this layer has dried for the next step.
Right, so as you can see how soft those feathers are on the bottom and how kind of simple that kind of, they just kind of blend together. I love it so much. So this next step, we are going to try to get a lot of individual lines. So a lot of times with watercolor, if you're working with these water reservoir brushes, the way that you start on the page and then lift up. And if you're pushing the, the water reservoir brush at all, you're gonna add more water to it. So if you want a solid black or a solid gray, all the same tone and keep it pretty like a nice color, what I like to do is put it on a little piece of plastic. You can use packing tape and kind of tape it down on another piece of watercolor paper. <laughs> this one is actually one of uh, my husband's card sleeves for his Pokemon collection. So I was like, oh, that works. Cause you know, I couldn't find my packing tape and then I didn't want to clean my paint palette. And then there was this, you know, card sleeve for Pokemon cards right next to me and I'm like oh that works perfectly so literally whatever you have available that will be fine and I just made a puddle of the pearl gray so it's going to stay the same same tone throughout the whole time I'm trying to do these lines and I am going to be using the extra small detail brush and working from that inner point which is that stem and then out towards the edges um, just start getting those lines and so you will go back again to add the outer layer of feather pieces uh but this is kind of going to act as a guide and i want to make sure these are the darkest too so that has the extra layer and yeah so just kind of working in that v shape and fill up your whole feather with lines as skinny as you can get them <laughs> All right, so now that we've filled it up again, the same kind of tenderly motion with the smaller brush now, and just kind of swoopy swoopies all different directions. That part looks honestly the best when it's not completely uniform, so get a little bit creative and free flowing there. Outline the stem, and then we are going to work back again and make sure all of those lines are dark enough. And so if some of them are not dark enough, you can use this paintbrush the way that you would dipping it in water and dipping it to the peerless watercolor sheet. But instead of water, you can use that dark puddle. And so now you're kind of packing in two extra layers of paint. So that has completely dried and now we are going to be doing the outer feather edges. Uh, you can make a kind of outline with a pencil to kind of give you like a guide to make sure the lines are a little bit more uniform. And then you are going to use that extra small detail brush again and that extra dark puddle of pearl gray. And you're going to follow those lines in the V shapes in the base of your feather and you're going to have them come out to that guideline that you made on the outside of the feather. And yeah, so hopefully you, with those guidelines that kind of keep you in that, you know, the directions of where they're supposed to go to make them a little bit more natural. But basically just as small as you can outline the feather 
with your little individual lines. And so yeah, so if this, this that base layer is dry and this one is wet on dry, you should be able to get a nice crisp, super, super dark, sharp line. And then with any kind of, you know, smaller detail lines like this, like within hair or, you know, any kind of small detail lines, you want to make them further enough apart because if they fur if they kind of touch at all, then they'll kind of bleed together and they'll become one giant line. So make sure they're enough apart that they don't touch and then you can see all of those individual lines. All right, so now for the fun part, we are going to start the lifting. So to start, you are going to need that same little plastic sheet or paint palette or whatever you're going to use. You're going to make a puddle of perfectly clear, crystal clean water, and you're going to place dots of water in the pattern or texture that you would like on your feather. So I am kind of working down from middle dot and then a row of dots on either side of the stem and then another middle dot on the top and then kind of in between those middle dots and working in that general area. So you can see on the page, like it is a good amount of water, like it is a puddle for sure. So what that puddle does is lifting up the paint and kind of creating a little, you know, a little pool of liquid. And once you have your pattern down, you're going to place your paper towel over the pattern and then when you lift it off the idea is that that pattern is going to be a lighter version of what you have already painted so not all paint works the same um, and not all colors in peerless work the same so a lot of times when it's like a yellow or kind of some reds i feel like maybe i'll actually do that maybe i'll do a study on watercolor lifting of all of the peerless colors because it literally is one of my favorite techniques and it is so cool so i have taught this class before too and someone was did the same exact thing as we did but they weren't using peerless and it didn't have the same lifting capabilities so i don't know which paint she was using but that does come into factor so if you are doing this peerless is amazing for this technique I cannot speak for every watercolor company though. So uh, yeah, so now where you're here and you can even go on the outer edges. So those outer edges of those feathers that are, have the white of the paper, you can, it will get a little bit of um, like a ring of paint, but I solved that problem with using a little bit of um, like either gel pen or white ink to kind of reestablish those lines too. But in all, it works beautifully so i will be back for the big reveal all righty so we have placed all of our water droplets and we're just letting it sit for just a couple seconds and then when you're laying down your paper towel, you wanna to make sure you don't move or smudge or in any direction and you want it completely flat down. And then once you feel like you have all of it sucked up, lift it off and there you go. You have your beautiful 
watercolor lifting technique feather and has such an organic shape and it has some of those lines underneath that are a little bit lighter so you get that kind of texture and the contrast of the light and the dark and we're only using one color how cool is that so i love this i think it's so beautiful you can always go back through and add some more detail and some lines or not um and kind of clean up some lines if you have some areas that got too too dark and you want to put the white back in you can use a white gel pen or white ink but yeah super simple tutorial today but awesome beautiful outcome so i hope you enjoy it so i think we're going to do a couple more tutorials on our basic to you know basic techniques again and see how cool we can get all of these gorgeous paintings with with not you know super extreme five hour long tutorials which you know obviously those are my favorite to do but you know it's good to kind of get back to the basics again and see all of the techniques that we can do Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and share with your friends. And if you do this painting, definitely share with us on Instagram. We would love to see it.